How's it going folks, it's Rob here and in this week's clip we're going to run through a couple of the most commonly asked questions and just some that I think are interesting that I found in the comments section below the clips themselves. Uh, please keep in mind I'm filming this out the back of our house while they're uh, working on the renovation so yeah you might hear a few nail guns and saws go off every now and then. And while you're here you might as well hit that little subscribe button down there and click on the bell icon so you can get notifications every time I upload another aquaponic clip to the channel and you can come along and say g'day. Uh, I thought to begin with we'll just have a go through a couple of random uh, questions, um, comments, just on the little cheat sheets here. Um, Absolute Altitudes asks, do you breed your own fish? No we don't. Uh, we use Australian natives, silver and jade perch, and they don't breed that well in a tank system in a backyard, so we need to buy them from hatcheries. Around the world you can um, quite often get species you can breed in your own tanks, tilapia is one that springs to mind but you'll also find that it's fairly tightly regulated, so it's something to keep in mind. 100 Gardens has asked if I have any beds set up as Constant Flow. Um, these guys all here at the moment are Constant Flow. I've taken the bell out of the bell siphon, so there's a constant level of water in all the beds. I haven't really used them up until now, mainly because there's no fish in the system, no solids, uh, because when I first started out, I did have a Constant Flow bed, and I found out it ended up being a, a really good solids filter and I had a few issues so I haven't revisited it since but I probably will down the line. Bruce Bruce has said that he's been adding a small nylon tube or a snorkel to act as a breaker in his bell siphons. Um, he's basically wanting to know is it wanted, not wanted or does it matter. The design I have in ours they run pretty flawlessly to tell you the truth. And Rob from Bigelow Brook Farm he has an awesome little setup which is an auto brake bell siphon with the little snorkel running down to a cap. Um, I think they're a fantastic idea especially if you've got a high flow bed. Something I might look into, you know, just making one up in the future to see how they go, but for the time being, I'm pretty happy with the one that I've got. Lucas has asked, are sumps necessary in aquaponic systems? Well, it sort of depends on your layout. Uh, I like to have them in there as that's where I keep the pump and it's a bit of a safeguard, um, mainly because if something happens with the plumbing and the pump pumps all the water out of the system through a broken line or whatever, it means there's going to be a volume of water in the fish tank that they can survive in. So that's why I like having a sump with the pump in there rather than having the pump in with the fish. On to a couple of questions about water. Um, Mike has asked, um, what do we do with rainwater um, with the system? Do the beds have to be covered? Uh, I don't worry about it here because I allow for a free board in our sump. What that means is I leave probably around about uh, 150 to 200 litres worth of um, space in our sump tank through summer when we get the bulk of our rain and that pretty much will, you know, looks after any um, deluge that is collected by the grow beds and the fish tank. And because our wet season is through our summer months, the growth in the system pretty much will looks after that added water, no problem whatsoever. As for overflows, it has happened here uh, probably about five or six times over the last eight years. We've just had that much rain, the system has overflowed. I haven't really noticed a large loss of the nitrate in the system. I've always had some in there, so I haven't really had to worry about it in that respect. But if you're in an area where it rains all the time, it definitely would um, pay to have some sort of cover over your system so you're not continually diluting the nutrients in there. Big and Strong 21 has asked if they can use pond water in their system. Now, I don't really see a problem with it as long as you know where the water source from the pond water is coming from, making sure there's no chemical runoff going into it. You might want to um, just make sure the fish in the pond are healthy, so you're basically not putting any diseases from the pond into your system. And not only that, microscopic um, life forms, um, little snails and things like that can hitch a ride in the water and then grow out and, you know, you can end up with an explosion with them in the system. So, yeah, you could, but a couple of caveats, just make sure the water's healthy and uh, you don't have any hitchhikers that come along that could, yeah, cause issues with your system. So on to the uh, chopper flip IBCs and barrel build clips. Now the first one is, is the barrel good for raising trout? No, I'm sorry to say, I wouldn't raise any table fish in the small little um, 200 litre, 50-ish uh, gallon uh, barrel chop and flip build. It's far too small. I think you're better off running probably about 10 small goldfish in there, and that's it. Uh, as for plants, a couple of herbs, small herbs, maybe a lettuce or two, something like that. But it's definitely not a, a food producing system. It's something that you can grow a couple of herbs, maybe a bit of greens, and yeah, have some goldfish for the kids to have a look at. Another popular question we get under the chop and flip build clips is do we need a filter for these or something along those lines? Now, uh, these little systems, because they're so small, I really don't think you need a filter on there as long as you don't overstock them with fish because it's the fish that make the solids. 
Uh, but if you do have an issue, I mean, you can clean them out probably in an hour or two, um, the large IBC bed, and probably half an hour, the small little chop and flip. Easiest way to do it is pop a pipe on the drain line coming back into the fish tank and run that out to the garden. Uh, fill up the grow bed with some water, dechlorinated water would be the best bet, so you don't kill your bacteria. Swish the clay around, give it a bit of a rinse off, and then strain it and pop it in a barrel to one side. Once all the clay is clean, uh, pull out the standpipe and let all that mucky water go out to the garden and feed up the patch. Then all you need to do is um, pop the clay back in, pop the standpipe in. One thing to keep in mind if you're doing it with an IBC chop and flip is uh, do it at the end of the season after all the fish have been harvested. That way, um, if you kill off a lot of the bacteria, which you will do by removing it from the system, cleaning the clay, um, it won't pose a problem to the fish in there. You can pop your new fingerlings in. It'll already pretty much all be cycled because there'll be enough bacteria to kickstart it again and away you go. Scott asked, would a little radial flow filter work in this situation? And I don't think it would, Scott, if you did want to filter in a small little IBC chop and flip, mainly because all those fish solids are going to be chopped up by the pump. Now, for those solids, fine solids to settle out, it's going to have to be a rather large radial flow filter. So I think what you're better off doing is building yourself a little canister style filter. There's basically water coming in at the bottom, um, going up, percolating through some sort of media that will capture the solids and then flowing out into the grow bed itself. So pretty basic little builds and yeah, they are very effective at removing fine solids. So another common question I get with the solids is, if you're removing the solids, aren't you removing nutrients from the system? Yes, you are. You will be removing some. Um, I've had a couple of turkeys tell me I'm taking all the nutrients out. No, I'm not. Uh, there's a, a study going around that shows that there is quite a large concentration of all the other macronutrients needed um, in for plant growth left in the water column. Uh, the solids only takes out a percentage of that. So while we're talking solids and beds, we'll talk media. Uh, one of the common questions I get on our aquaponic um, ginger harvest clip is what are those brown stones? Uh, basically, they're expanded clay. They're one of the um, most popular hydroponic growing mediums. They have a lot of surface area which make um, great homes for microbes to live in that process the waste from the fish. So I've been asked by a couple of people like Jonathan up north if scoria or volcanic rock is all right to use as a growing medium. It is all right to use as long as it hasn't been dyed or coloured with any um, chemicals. Uh, best thing to do is to ring up the manufacturer and uh, check with them that there's no dyes in it. The other medias you can use are expanded shale, and I'll put a link to um, Rob's website where you can see that if you're in America, or even things like basalt or blue metal, we call it here in River Rock. So there's a wide variety of um, uh, medias out there. If you are after clay in Southeast Queensland, I'll pop a link in again in the description uh, to Aqua Gardening. Uh, they're over on the north side of Brisbane. Um, it's an affiliate link. I get a a couple of cents here and there if you purchase off them um, but they do uh, bulk deals for their clay you'll find most hydroponic stores will do that um, an average grow bed takes about seven bags of the 45 litre can of clay um, so yeah if you buy in bulk ask for a discount it can't hurt most places will give it to you before we leave the media i just thought i'd go over one of the common questions i do get asked and that's about floating clay after people build their first grow beds uh, what that basically is is there's a lot of um, voids a lot of um, uh, pores in that clay which is great for bacteria surface area and the reason it's floating is it's just waiting for the water to be absorbed give it some weight and then it'll sit down in the bed so Evan and Jeff have asked about the valves I use in the system um, the the barbed valves that I use in the flexi pipe you can find them in most hardware plumbing and irrigation shops I use a 25 mil for our pump here size wise they go anywhere from the half inch or 13 mil up to one inch or 25 mil so you can pretty much all find them to suit most systems out there. I would recommend if you are running them under pressure from the pump though, to use some sort of hose clamp on there, just to make sure that they don't blow off under pressure. The uh, ball valves that we use on the system, the ones with the blue handles, I forgot their name, sorry, I'll, there'll, there'll be a little pop-up up there for you. I like them because you can take the handle off. If you can take the handle off, it means no one can come along and fiddle with your pipework and maybe overflow your system or starve a fish tank from water and that sort of thing. Um, so I find them really handy. On to where we get our tanks from. The tanks that I've got in this system, um, I bought them secondhand and the manufacturing company who sells them is actually closed up. Um, so what you're better off doing is searching your local area for aquaculture tanks or if nothing comes up, stock tanks. Um, and yeah, if someone stocks stock tanks, they pretty much all should be able to get aquaculture tanks through as well. Now what you're looking for for a fish tank in particular is a one to two 
height to diameter ratio. Um, it's better to have them lower and wider just so you get a better movement in the water. Plus it's also easier to um, keep an eye on your fish and manage them as well. So a question I um, haven't been asked before, but that makes common sense to ask it is, why do I reduce the water in the fish tanks? And that's basically just to make the fish easier to catch. Less water, less water for them to swim around in. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really harm the fish that are left in there. There's enough agitation that oxygen's getting in and I fill the tank up straight away anyway. Uh, normally if I'm just taking out one or two fish for dinner, I don't worry about it. But if I'm doing a big harvest, that's pretty much all when I drop the level of the water in the tank. And if you are concerned about oxygen levels, you can always add an air stone in there and yeah, that'll um, pretty much will provide the remaining fish with oxygen until it fills back up again. Uh, a couple of questions about eating the fish. Do we eat them? Yes, we do. Very tasty. Thank you very much. As I said before, we've got none in there at the moment, but uh, when we restock it, we'll be restocking it with the jade perch because they grow very fast and they also taste very nice done on a barbecue and also tossed into a fish curry. I really want to thank you folks for coming along and giving me a load of feedback on the design clips. We've got a load of feedback from people that's helped out, um, other people who are with schools and they're using that information to go on and help other people. I, you know, thank you for letting me know that it's helped you guys out. It's sort of spurring me on to do a couple more um, clips along that series. Not people's designs, but different components that might help people out. Um, so it's always great to get that feedback and I really appreciate it. And just before I go, I also need to uh, thank those awesome folks who are supporting us on Patreon for the time being till the end of the month and subscribe star and also the YouTube membership area. Thank you very much, folks. Um, if you're a Patreon person and you haven't um, heard yet, I am closing down my account there. So there'll be a link below to subscribe star if you want to jump on over. If you don't, you just want to end your uh, um, subscription. I thank you very much for all the support you've shown. But yeah, I will pretty much all leave it there. I do hope that this clip has helped you out some. We'll try that again. I do hope this clip has helped you out some folks and your own gardens and aquaponics are booming. I'll catch you later. Cheers folks. Have a good one.